Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I just want to say I'm really sorry if the audio sounds different. We are now in a different house and I've also had a cold for the past two weeks, so it might sound a bit iffy. But I'm gonna learn how to make this cute macrame plant hanger. So I've got a seven centimeter hoop. I've got three wooden beads and two lots of 160 centimeters, four lots of 230 centimeters and one lot of 40 to 50 centimetres. So we're going to start off by grabbing the wooden hoop and we're going to be attaching the cords using a lark's head knot. So fold the cords in half like this and take the midway point through a hoop and then passing those two cords through the loop there and then pull that to tighten it. And that is a lark's head knot. So we're going to do that with all the cords, making sure that the two cords measuring 160 centimetres are in the middle and then on either side will be two lots of the 230 centimetre cords. Okay, so once we have done that, and they're all looking nice and neat. We're going to grab this sixth cord from the left here and angle it down towards the left at a diagonal angle. Take that fifth cord and bring it up and over the cord. And then it's gonna go behind and through this loop here. And you can just pull that to the top and repeat those exact same steps once more on the same cord. And that's the double clove hitch knot. So we're just going to repeat this with the other four cords on this left side, making sure to angle it down towards the left. It's a lot easier if you have something to hold down the hoop. Normally if I wasn't filming this I would just use my laptop to pin it down to my desk so you can pull a bit harder and not have it slide around. So now we're just going to repeat the exact same on the other side using the seventh chord and angling it down towards the right trying to make it a symmetrical line so they look the same. We're going to be taking the eighth chord up, over, behind and through that loop and then repeat once more on the same chord. Okay, so now we've got two lines done on either side we're going to take this sixth chord again on the left and just create another line of double clove hitch knots but we're going to be leaving out the last chord and then we're just going to repeat the same on the right side so leave out that last chord so now it's time to grab one of your wooden beads and attach it so I do recommend using sellotape it's much easier to create a point to put your beads through. So we're going to grab those two middle cords, so it's one from either side, and just tape up the end of the cords. And then just push the bead on and slide it right to the top. the two sides will close together and you'll start to see your shape form a little bit. Now it's time to just remove the sellotape. I like to just pull the two cords apart like this so you don't have to cut any cords off and lose any length. And then we're just going to grab that second cord and now angle it down towards the right and create a row of double clove hitch knots until we meet the middle cord of the bead.
So we're grabbing that first chord now and creating a line of double clove hitch knots again. And again we're leaving out the last chord on this one. So we're just going to repeat the exact same on the right side. And that is one shape complete. So now we're going to start the second shape. So we'll be taking that sixth chord again and just starting that first row there. So it's very simple once you've got the first shape down and you know how to make it. It may seem complicated when you look at the plant hanger but once you have got the pattern down and the knot down it's really easy to create it. So again just repeating that on the other side trying to make them as symmetrical as I can. The weight of the plant will pull it down a bit and make it look a bit more even as well. So now I'm just going to repeat all the steps to make the second and third shape including the beads. And here we have the pattern part finished. I'm going to split the remaining chords into three groups of four and we're going to create square knots. So I'm measuring about 12 centimetres down from the point of our last triangle. And then I'm taking this chord on the right over the middle two and the first chord will go over that chord behind the middle two and then through this loop right here. So that's one half of a square knot and to finish it we're going to do the exact same but start on the left. So the left will go over the middle two and behind that fourth chord. And then that chord will go behind the middle two and through that loop there that's created by the other chord. And then pull that to tighten it. And that is a square knot. So we're just gonna repeat that on either side, making sure it's about the same level as this square knot. So now we have got a row of three square knots, we can take the two chords from either side out and then we're going to push those four chords together and make square knots there. I make them about five centimetres down from this first row. So this is called an alternating row of square knots. So with the outer two chords now, you can grab them and what we're going to do is flip them around so the two most outer chords will now become at the two middle chords like so and then we're just going to make a square knot at the same level as this second row so now if you bunch it together and put your hand in you can kind of see where your plant will sit so we're just going to grab that extra chord and we're going to create a gathering knot so if you hold all the chords together like this and then you leave a small tail at the top of your extra chord and a long loop at the bottom, a little tail there and the loop there and then we're going to take the long chord and wrap it around all of the chords. So I'm doing this about four or five centimetres down from my last row. So I've still got the loop there and the small tail at the top and keep wrapping until you do about four or five wraps just to make it very secure. and then take that long tail and go through the loop there. And then just gently hold that in place and if you pull on the short tail at the top, you can see that the loop starts to close and it will secure that cord in place. So pull it until it's about halfway through your knot. You don't want to pull it all the way through as it will undo the knot. So that is now nice and secure and your plant won't fall out. So we can go ahead and just trim off the excess cords from the wrapping knot and then I'm also just trimming my plant hanger. Now you could definitely brush out the cords at the bottom if you wanted for a more fluffy textured look. I like to just leave mine as is. If you do recreate this, please be sure to tag me on Instagram at lunacraftsonline. I'd really love to see it and share it. And if you do like this, I have plenty of other plant hanger tutorials on my channel already. 
and if you could subscribe, like or comment, that would really help me out and make my day and I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.